Hey everyone and welcome to another video. This video is actually kind of an improvement on one that I already have posted. Um, <clears throat> the difference between this one is not much. It, the main difference is that this one uses, um, it splits the data up into uh, training and testing data sets. Um, so we train on the training um, data sets and then use the <clears throat> test data set to make a prediction and to check for accuracy. Um, whereas the other one did not. <clears throat> so just as a refresher, I'll show you the data that we'll be working with real quick. Um, we have this CSV. Uh, <clears throat> it's called the poverty data set. Um, I got it from Kaggle. It, the link is in the description. So feel free to go ahead and check it out. I did delete a few columns um, that had null values or NAs. Um, just to clean it up a little bit beforehand, but other than that, it's exactly how it came. Um, you can see there's a lot of different features in here, such as um, country um, is urban, so that's whether or not they live in an urban environment, age, gender, marital status, um, religion, relationship, education level, um, literacy, so that right there is going to be our target, and then all these other um, features that we'll be using to uh, make the prediction. Um, we'll actually only be using a few of these features, um, but the main goal of this um, video is to show how to, um, you know, train a logistic regression model um, using R. And then after that, you know, you can go and, and tune it and uh, figure out exactly which parameters you want to use. So this is just supposed to be a simple example of how to do that. Not necessarily um, the, the perfect model um, that's performance in parameter tuned. Um, so <clears throat> showed you the data set a little bit. I'm going to be using RStudio. Um, just like the last video, I'm going to go ahead and clear out this console. Uh, you'll see some of the results in the console below and I'm just going to walk you through each of the steps one by one. We got a few different steps. One, we're going to load the data set. We're going to do some simple cleaning. We're going to split it into uh, testing and training sets. We're going to train the model. We're going to make a prediction using the model on our test data. And then last, we're going to check the model performance. So I'm just going to walk through each of these steps um, one by one and kind of talk through them. So first of all, I'm going to clear the workspace with this command right here. which resets everything for us. Um, next, I'm going to load in the data set and the number of rows in this data set. So it comes, I just have it saved on my local machine and my C drive. And then this command right here, and row n row and r, if you remember, gives you the, the count of rows in a data set, and poverty being our new data set. <clears throat> so now moving on to cleaning. Um, I know that there are some rows with NA values. Um, if you don't know how many, you can run this command. It's the is.na function. And this, what I have here basically just shows how many rows in the data set. Um, have NA values. So there's 341. Since that's not too many, I'm just going to get rid of all those rows right here um, with this command. You could, as another option, replace them with zeros, um, but I didn't want to have to worry about that for this video, so I just decided to get rid of them. Um, we can double check that we indeed did get rid of all of those rows by running the same command again. Um, and if you look down here, we have zero. So now let's just see how many rows are in our data set. So we went from 8,400 up here to 80,59. So a little bit less, but we still have 8,000 rows to work with, which is pretty good. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the target will be literacy, a true or false value. So we need to convert it to a factor beforehand. Uh, we can check to see if it's a factor using the is.factor function. It is not. So then this line right here, uh, and a little refresher, so poverty is our data set. The dollar sign is how we 
um, show that we're going to call a column in the data set and we're working with the literacy column. Um, and then we use the as factor function to um, convert it to a factor. And then if we run this again, it should say true. So now let's go. So now we have it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we have the NA, the rows with NA gone, and we've converted our target to be a factor. Now we're going to split the data set into testing and training. The first thing that we we'll want to do is set this random seed. Uh, we're going to be using the sample function down below, which um, using uses randomness. And so in order to be able to reproduce results, we have to set the seed. And if we move down here to this line, um, using the sample function, we're saying that we want to make our training data set 70% um, of um, the original data set. And so what this does is actually just returns um, a big vector of indexes, randomly chosen indexes. But again, because we set the seed, they'll be the same every time. And then down here, using the set diff, we basically just grab all the indexes that are not in the train index or the train indices uh, vector. Now we have these two index, these two vectors, one for the indexes or indices that will be used for the training set and one for the test set. And let me show you what that looks like. It's just, uh, here's the first six um, vectors in the training, uh, in the train indices vector. So now we'll take those indices and use those in these lines right here to actually um, split up our data set. There's the train data set, and here's the test data set. You can see that um, we just used um, you know, basic data set, data frame, um, syntax in order to do that. Next, we can just check the size of um, the testing and training data sets just for fun. You can see here, train data is 5641 rows and the test data is 2418. <clears throat> Alright. Now, we're going to actually train the model. So, Right here, what we have is um, the GLM model, which I think stands for General Linear Model. Um, when we specify the family as binomial, that makes it a logistic regression model. Um, the way this is written is this is our target, literacy, and then these uh, are our features. <clears throat> so, again, we could you know, play around with what features we use, but I chose these one, two, three, four uh, features to work with. Again, just for the sake of example. So, and we're going and the model is going to be called GLM dot literacy. It's our logistic regression model for predicting literacy. Go ahead and head around that. Now we're going to take this model to step five and use it to actually make predictions on the test data set. So <clears throat> you do use predict, um, specify the model that we're using, um, specify the data set, and then we specify the type, which is response, and, make, and run this line to make the prediction. And then if you want to see what that looks like, see here that we have these percentages. So this one's really close to one. And since it's a, bi it's a binary uh, target, um, then one is true, zero is false. So what we want to do now is convert anything that's greater than or equal to 50% uh, into true. 
and everything else in the faults. And that's exactly what this line is doing right here. <clears throat> and while we're doing that, so this is a simple if else function. So we say what I just said, everything above 50% or equal to it is true, and then everything else is false. And while we do that, we add another column to the test data set um, called predict.literacy. And we're going to use that to compare against the original literacy values in the test data set. So let me go ahead and run that. And then, um, so we did that conversion, but what that did is it actually just converted those two strings of true or false. We need to cast those to be Boolean values. And the best way that I <clears throat> figured out how to do that is it's really simple, just as logical. It's basically just casting it. Um, so, we, and then we, so we're just casting the true or false to be, instead of strings, to be Boolean um, values. want to see what that looks like. Um, this is our predicted value. True, true. True, false, false, true, true. Okay. And then for our original values, true, false, false, true, true. So it's actually 100% accurate for the first five, but we need to see how accurate it is for, you know, all 8,000. Or actually, I guess it was smaller than 8,000 rows. It was like 2,000 for the test data set. Um, and it's a pretty simple way to do that. Uh, we basically just compare uh, the predicted value right here against the original value. And we take the mean of that. And we just set it equal to this variable called accuracy. And so when it does that, it'll just say true, false, true, true, false. If they're, if it's, if they're equal, it'll be true. If they're not equal, it'll be false. Um, which the code understands to be ones and zeros. And so then it just um, converts, it adds all those up, divides by the total, you know, to get the average. Sets it equal to um, accuracy variable. And then let's see how we did. We'll print the accuracy out. All right, so down here, um, what it tells us is that 77% of the... Um, literacy values in the test data set were predicted correctly um, using our logistic regression model. Um, and so that's it for this. Um, be sure to um, subscribe um, and like this or leave comments, questions, uh, and I'll try to get back to you. Um, also, feel free to visit uh, the first video um, that I did of this, a little bit more simple version. Um, where I didn't split it into testing and training, um, but otherwise mostly the same. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it.